Hi there guys, welcome back. Today we've got something a little bit different because we're going to be talking about combination locks. Um, so everybody from UKLS, cover your ears and everybody else, keep on watching. So you've already seen me uh, decoding this guy here, a simple Yale lock with no false gates. Um, but today we're going to be talking about something a little bit more complicated with false gates and the ability to change the combination um, and we're going to be hopefully explaining how they work with the help of this crude uh, drawing here and uh, also we're going to show you how to decode them and so the way these usually work is quite simple you put the right combination in you can turn the shackle 180 degrees or 90 degrees depending on the lock push down and uh, change the combination we're going to change this to 1, 2, 3, lift the shackle up, close it, and of course it will lock and operate as usual. But how do they work? Well, uh, a lot of people actually think that you can decode one of these um, by listening to the clicks, um, but that's not so. Um, the clicks that you hear are in fact what they are. If we look quick uh, closely at these dials, we can see that they've all got grooves in between each number and in here you may not be able to see it but we have little ball bearings um, or pins which are pushed by spring force towards the dial so when you turn the dial you might hear a click and all that is is a ball bearing popping into the groove and it just helps us to center the number better and I've drawn that in an, into my diagram here got a spring and our pin or our ball bearing. Um, so how, how does the, the combination lock actually lock? Well we have in our case three dials um, but it's the same kind of system uh, no matter how many dials you have uh, and each dial is shaped like this it has a hole down the center and the shackle actually sits in that hole uh, it also has a little groove cut out uh, on one part of the hole, one side of the hole. And if we look here, we can actually see that we have teeth on the shackle. They are actually stuck onto the side of the shackle. And um, so you can imagine that we have to line up the dial so that this groove lines up with the tooth. Uh, and that allows the shackle to be opened. Uh, and so we have to line up all these dials so that these notches line up with the teeth and that allows the shackle to be pulled open. However, uh, our lock here is a little bit more complicated because we can change the dial, the combination rather. And so what we have here <laughs> is a very uh, crude uh, drawing of a dial. And you have to imagine this almost as a kind of star shape or an octagon. That was a very rough uh, job there. Um, so what we have here is an outer ring. This is the ring that we can see here. And we also have here an inner ring with these uh, teeth around the outside. And um, again we have in here our cutout. And I'll talk about these guys here a little bit later. But the idea with this is uh, that you can actually disengage the inner wheel from the outer wheel. And the inner wheel is what, the actual position of the inner wheel is what determines um, what number uh, the shackle will open on. And so we'll remember here that um, to change the shackle, the combination rather, you have to push down the shackle and what we're doing when we push down the shackle is we're disengaging the outer wheel from, or the inner wheel from the outer wheel and so we're left with the outer wheel and the inner wheel is actually down here and that allows us to actually move the outer wheel without moving the inner wheel and of course when we pull the shackle back up that re-engages the um, inner wheel with the outer wheel. Um, again I hope that made sense but um, we have our cutout here 
and it just works uh, like this one, uh, this diagram that I showed you here, uh, but it's just a little bit more complicated. And um, so you can imagine here that these are our, our numbers. Um, we have nine of them, and when we change the combination, we basically rotate the dial and we change the position uh, of the, in this case our combination lock would open on the number 6 um, I'm still trying to get it around my own head, it's quite com confusing um, but hopefully I'm not doing too bad a job of kind of explaining how it works uh, so when we usually decode one of these what we do is uh, especially one of these simple ones without false gates in it, we muddle up the combination and we pull tension on the shackle. And what that does is it causes these teeth to bind against the dials. And when we turn our dials, we turn them until we can feel a, a click or hear a click and the shackle moves out. And that means that our teeth have then popped into this groove here. But more complicated locks like this one, we actually have these false gates, which are just tiny little deep, uh, or shallow rather, uh, cutouts around the dial. And they're put there to kind of make us think that we've um, set that uh, dial when we actually haven't. Um, and so when we fall into a false gate, what we do is, while well, we're pushing, pulling tension on the shackle, and the shackle will actually, or this pin rather, will fall into the groove cut into the dial. Um, and so we can uh, demonstrate this here by showing you how to decode one of these. I'm going to muddle up the combination and make sure it's lined up. I actually can't see the combination. I'm going to hook it up onto this jig that I've made for it. Model it up. So I now have no idea what the combination is. Um, so the way we decode one of these is simply by taking a hold of the lock and let me switch this around here quickly. We grab a hold of the lock body and we pull outwards. If this wasn't mounted on something you'd actually have to put your finger in that hole and push the shackle outwards. And what you're doing there is you're causing the shackle to bind. You then muddle up the, each dial until you hear a click. You probably saw the shackle move outwards there. And now each dial is seized and it will not turn. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to wiggle each dial back and forth. And we're feeling for one that's harder to wiggle than the others. And in this case it's the middle dial. Now we could just turn as hard as we could on that dial but it wouldn't go anywhere so what we have to do we have to squeeze the shackle in to release the tension and just turn the dial a little bit. We can now continue tensioning the shackle as before because our dial is no longer in the false gate. We turn it until it clicks again. So we just keep on following that pattern. We're going to wiggle each dial, feel for the one that's harder to turn than the others um, which is bottom one in this case, we're going to squeeze the shackle together whilst turning the dial just one click. We can continue click turning it and it's now clicked into position again. It's the same, uh, same dial this time. And the middle dial this time. And we just keep on doing that until we actually get an open just like that and so what you're doing is well you're basically limiting the choices to either the false gates or the real gates and I don't actually know how many false gates there are on each dial I could probably figure that out so that's the real gate false gate that's one two, three, this is four, 
Uh, so there's actually four false gates on that dial. Okay, so we're going to quickly try this again. Model up a combination. It's really important that you get all the numbers centered. Put it on this way. Again, we're going to do the same thing. All the dials are now in either a true gate or a false gate. We're going to wiggle each dial. And sometimes it's obvious whether it's in a false gate or not. If your dial or if your dial is jammed in between uh, a number, you'll know that that is a false gate. So I just keep tension on the, the shackle. And I just release it when I want to turn the dial. And so we just keep cycling through. Feeling for the one that's binding the most. And it can take a long time. It really depends it's different every time but it usually doesn't take too long if you have a bit of practice and you saw that the shackle moved a huge amount there so we're probably getting closer and as you saw we're open there we go so it's not actually all that difficult um, and um, if you still don't understand then I could ha highly recommend going over to Potty314's channel he does a lot more uh, combination locks than I do and it's actually from him that I learned this technique. So um, please go and check out his channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but that's how it works. I hope that made sense. And um, I, I hope you understand now how they work. If you still aren't too sure, then please do drop me a PM. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll see you again soon.